Hello and welcome to another Acrylico tutorial. Please watch until the end for many tips and tricks you can use on your future projects. Before we move on, I'd like to thank Derivative as well as our Patreons for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification to support us into making more tutorials like this. For more tutorials and downloadable files, check out our Patreon and our Gumroad. There you'll have the chance to purchase toy files, tox files, HD and 4K renders. For 20% off, just type A code as a discount code on the checkout. I'll leave all the links in the description. Now on to today's tutorial. Let's start with a grid sop and a null right after. We're going to convert all the data to tops so that we can easily manipulate it and then at the end we're going to convert everything back to sops again. To go from sops to tops we need to convert to chops first. So let's first attach a sop to chop and a null right after. Then a chop to top followed by a null. Let's convert the whole thing back to SOPs to complete the network and then we can come back here and make changes. So let's right click, attach a top to chop followed by a null. And then back to SOPs with a chop to SOP and a null right at the end. Let's connect the null 1 to the chop 2. What we want to create here is a grid of lines, so let's open the grid parameter window, set the primitive type to polygon and the connectivity to columns. We notice here that there is a warning and this happens because the channels on the chop data are RGBA, whereas the channel scope on the SOP data is set to TX, TZ and TY. What we're going to do is set the channel scope to RG and B. If we do this, we'll get rid of the warning, but we'll end up with a diagonal line instead of the grid of lines. So somewhere here, the data got lost. When we convert from chops to tops, the data format is set only to R. So let's set this to RGB as well, and then we'll have our grid of lines. Now we wanted to convert this to tops so that we can modify the grid with textures. But right now if we check out the info here we have a size of 400 by 1. This is not an optimal sizing, we want instead a squared sizing. So in the chop to top let's set the image layout to fit to square. As soon as we do this we'll lose the grid again when we go back to sops. So we keep running into the same problem of the missing data in the conversion. This time it gets lost when we convert from tops back to chops. We see in the crop tab that we are only extracting the middle row of pixels. What we need to extract instead is the full image. Now as soon as we select this a set of channels will get output for each row of pixels. So back to the image tab, we'll change this by toggling on the output as a single channel. Great, from here let's create a geometry comp. Then let's divide the screen and set the second screen to geometry viewer. Let's press tab, create a line material, drag and drop it on the geometry and select parameter material. Our goal here is to control the thickness of these lines with tops. If we open the parameter window of the chop to sop, we have here these two parameters, the channel scope and the attribute scope. The channel scope sets the channels we will use to modify the attributes, and the attribute scope is a list of the actual attributes we're going to modify. In this case, we're using the RGB channels to modify P0, P1 and P2, which are the coordinates of the points, but we're not using the alpha channel yet. So let's use the alpha channel to control the width of the lines. Let's add the A for alpha in the list of channel scopes and the width as an attribute to be modified. This will not give us an immediate result since the alpha is a constant 1 and our chop to top has an RGB format. So let's change this in the comment tab into a 32-bit float RGBA format. Then from here let's add a reorder top right after the chop to top, which lets us choose any of the input channels for R, G, B and A output. 
so this will let us control which data goes into which channel. We see until now only the first input is being used for all channels. To separate the alpha, let's create a noise top. The chop to top and our noise need to have the same resolution. So let's open the noise parameter window, go to the command tab and we'll type in the following expression. OP chop to one dot width. Copy this expression and we'll paste it onto the second resolution parameter. But instead of width, we'll type height. Then we'll connect the noise to the second input of the reorder top. And now the reorder has two inputs. So what we wanted to do is use this noise to control the alpha channel. And like so, also control the width of the lines. And now in the parameter window we can specify which input and channel are used as the alpha channel in the output image. The input will be the second input and as the output channel we'll choose the luminance. This will set how bright or dark the lines are. And if we zoom in here we can notice that depending on the noise some part of the lines are darker giving the impression that the lines are thinner and some other parts are thicker. This we can further tweak by changing the parameters of the noise like the period, the amplitude or the offset. Now onto the rendering, let's create a render top and the camera. We don't need a light here since we're using a line material. Let's switch the second screen to top viewer and then let's attach an all at the end of the network and turn on the display flag. Before the null, let's attach an RGB key to set the background to black. Great, now we have our grid on a black background. Let's move a little closer with the camera by increasing the Translate Z parameter to around 2.4. To control the width of the lines, we could use a ramp and the same concept would apply. The ramp will now be the second input of the reorder and the lines start thinner on the left and the more we move towards the right, the thicker the lines get. In the same way that we're controlling the width through the noise types, we can also control it here through the ramp types. Once we've set the type of ramp, we can get a smoother transition if we set the extend left parameter to mirror. We can have so many different variations of patterns here, especially if we also change the resolution of the grid sub. So let's try 200 by 200. Since the ramp here contains so much white, we can use a level top and dial it down by decreasing the opacity in the post tab. Now here we run into a small issue, which is as soon as the number of rows and columns in the grid don't match, then we lose the pattern. This happens because the UV data in the chop to top is encoded in a way that only fits to square, meaning we have the same number of rows and columns. There is a way to overcome this, maybe if you have an idea you can leave it in the comments. Otherwise we have a solution and an in-depth explanation tutorial for this in our Patreon. For now, let's use the noise instead as our second input and let's also decrease the resolution of the grid back to 20 by 20. I'll also change the parameters of the noise to make it a little less bright and a little more interesting. Now for the animation, let's go to the transform tab of the noise and type appstime.seconds as our translate Z parameter. Another input alternative here could be a movie file in top which will fit with a fit top by pasting the same expression at the resolution. Here we could also add a multiply to get a noisy banana. And this is the base of the network. Now, in the beginning we saw another variation of this. Let's have another look. This was done by switching one operator in the network through another one and tweaking a couple of parameters. So let's ask ourselves the questions. Which could this operator be? 
Which property of the structure is changing? What is being animated? Pause the video, see if you can recreate this and then come back for the solution. Ok, so to recreate this, let's go to the beginning of the network and attach a sphere sub instead of the grid as a base structure. Open the parameter window and decrease the radius to get a full view of the sphere. Then go to the noise and to get this little triangle look, decrease the harmonic gain and the exponent all the way down. Then to rotate it, let's just animate the rotate Y parameter of the sphere. And this was it for the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments and for the next couple of seconds, here's a preview of our Patreon tutorial which is coming tomorrow.